Okay, so optimal transport. Why do we talk about it in a computer vision foundations lecture? Yeah. And um, here's again my uh, grand diagram of efficiently solvable problems. Um, as you remember, we've spent a lot of time looking at shortest path, uh, widest path, and so on. Um, then we talked about min cost flow, which allowed us to do tracking. And today, at the very end of the semester, we finally get to optimal transport, which is a special case, as it turns out, of min cost flow. And why would you care? Um, in uh, computer vision, I'll give you a few examples, but first I will, I will say what is optimal transport in the first place. So um, it is easiest to visualize if we think of two distributions living in the same space, like this one here and that one there. And uh, we may be interested in finding or measuring some kind of distance between these distributions. Um, or we may wonder how to change one distribution into the other one with the least possible effort. And um, now one needs to specify what is the cost of making changes. And the very simple and the particular case is to make this cost a function of distance. In particular, you could say, well, the cost is simply given by the distance. Yeah? So um, let's say we have this hill on top and uh, this is where the name comes from, by the way, Earth Movers Distance, and we want to turn it into that hill with the smallest possible effort. And uh, this was, by the way, a problem that really was meaningful in the 18th century when uh, Monge uh, thought about it first, because back then um, people would have to, you know, carry each little bit with a shovel or, you know, with a with an ox cart. So it mattered uh, to minimize the total distance that would have to be traveled with the dirt. So if we say that the cost is just given by the Euclidean distance, then this is called the Earth Movers distance. And the, the question is to figure out what is the best strategy you know, we have too much dirt here in the uh, bottom or in the back right corner. We have too little in uh, the front left corner. But what's the optimal strategy uh, to transport mass here? Yeah. Now, this is a very special case because um, these distributions somehow live in the same space and the cost is just given by distance. We can also have a more general scenario where we say we have a couple of source items that need to be brought to a couple of target items and there can and the cost between each source and between each target item is given so it's a bipartite graph and we want to minimize the overall cost that would be a discrete case if we have countably many source and target items and then there are of course uh, continuous extensions of this so this is you know broadly what optimal transport is, at least in this special case of earth movers distance. Um, sometimes, why we need it in computer vision, sometimes we need to measure uh, a difference, or I've, I've written here a discrepancy between distributions. I wrote discrepancy because I wanted a term that is not overloaded by some particular mathematical meeting. Yeah, so let's just broadly say, um, I want to measure uh, the distances, let's say here, between A and B, or the distances between C and D. And uh, one legit question to ask is, you know, the top or the bottom case, uh, in which case are the distributions more similar? Is A and B more similar, or is C and D more similar to each other? Uh, and now that depends, of course, on uh, what the features are. So here, um, I labeled these uh, axes with uh, the variable nu, which, in, in phys which physicists usually use for um, frequency. And 
So by that, I already imply um, that these features have a particular order. So if I'm thinking of this as, as frequencies or, or wavelengths, uh, then two contiguous or two adjacent bins will have similar frequency or will have similar wavelength. And if I'm thinking of these as, let's say, uh, for example, absorption spectra, well, then I would argue, and probably most people would, that A and B are more similar to each other than C and D. Uh, but, well, this really depends on whether the features have a natural order or not. Um, so to give an example where this is not the case necessarily, if we look at uh, gene expression patterns in biology, um, the order in which I enumerate the genes, this is pretty arbitrary. And there it would make less sense <clears throat> um, to define distances between two gene expression profiles in terms of an earth mover's distance, at least in this original space. Yeah. So, well, and uh, why do I, uh, you know, if you think this is obvious, why do I talk about it so much? Well, because if, uh, you know, if, you, if somebody asks you to compute distances, probably the first thing you would usually try is a Euclidean distance um, or a, um, let's take the square of it, let's say an L2 distance. And it so happens that in this example, which I'm showing here, uh, let's assume that these uh, blobs that I've been drawing here, that they all have finite support. So there is no overlap at all between A and B, and there is no overlap at all between C and D. And if I now compute something like the, um, the sum of squared distances, so let's say I'm uh, indexing my features by I, and uh, I'm interested if I'm thinking that A is a histogram and B is a histogram, I, I could do something like this. And uh, it turns out that if I use this particular measure, well, then the distance in the top case and the distance in the bottom case will be the same because the distributions do not overlap. So the distances that we usually work with don't capture the kind of intuition that I think we agree on here. Um, so we need something different. Uh, now, if you think about uh, you know, these things as piles of uh, earth or piles of dirt, um, then it's clear that you have to travel a, a bigger distance in the CD case uh, than in the AB case. All right. So one reason why we care about optimal transport in, in computer vision is because we frequently um, need to measure discrepancies between distributions. A, a more concrete application is uh, shown by these images here. Um, these images of, um, what are these rooms called? Sleeping rooms or something? These um, uh, images are not real images, but they were invented by a computer who had seen many examples of, uh, of these um, real world sleeping rooms. And I will show you later today why that has anything to do with measuring discrepancies between distributions. Secondly, we sometimes need to interpolate between distributions. For example, we can understand a shape, as you see in the bottom left corner. I can interpret a shape as a distribution. And if I simply th uh, assume that this is you know, one point in voxel space, and this is another point in voxel space, if I interpolate it linearly between these two, well, then I would get a superposition where the, I think the, the, this thing is a cow, where the cow becomes fainter and fainter and the duck um, becomes stronger and stronger. But at any one moment, I would have an overlap. So the voxels would not have values of one or zero of solid or air, but I would have a mixture and I would have these weird superposition shapes that 
you know, maybe in, in quantum mechanics, if, if you think of this as a sort of Schrodinger cat example, might make sense, but, but not in the you know, ordinary world of shapes. Or to give you a, a simpler example, uh, let's look at two limiting distributions here. Um, the one distribution is this one. Let's call it A. And the other distribution, I need a different color. The other distribution is this one here. And if we're now asked to interpolate between the two, again, if we do it uh, by just saying that the black is one point in high dimensional feature space and the red one is a point in high dimensional feature space and now we just sample the line segment along these two points, well, then uh, you get these interpolations which are shown in between. Huh? So it would be pretty high here and not so high there. And if we walk further along the interpolation line, it will be pretty high here, not so high there. You know, it's just linear interpolation. But what we do want, perhaps, if the task is to interpolate between these two distributions, is more something like this. Huh? So the gradual um, translation and changing of the shape of the distribution. And th this is the kind of thing that optimal transport is useful for. These two pictures are taken from a beautiful set of slides and a talk uh, that I also link to in the references. All right, so this is why we're interested in optimal transport in computer vision. And uh, next, let us look at how to actually compute this.